Four Women Impressionists. You have probably heard of Monet, Renoir, and Degas, who are famous Impressionists. Less well-known are Mary Cassatt, Bertha Morisot, Eva Gonzalez, and Marie Brockman, who were women members of the circle and exhibited works that were as innovative as those of their male counterparts. Because of the cultural ideologies of the 19th century, women artists, artistic educations, access to different environments, acceptable subjects, conventional ideas of acceptable behavior, and critiques by art critics were different than male artists. Please look for how the cultural norms affected their lives and the commonalities and differences of these four women impressionists. Mary Stevenson Cassatt was born on May 22, 1844 in Pennsylvania, in a city now known as Pittsburgh. She was born into a high social standing family and was the daughter of a real estate and investment broker. Her early schooling prepared her to be a proper wife and mother and included classes such as homemaking, embroidery, music, sketching, and painting. At the age of 16, in 1860, she enrolled at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. Unfortunately, the male faculty and students patronized and resented her attendance. In 1862, she left the program and went to Europe. In 1865, she convinced her parents to let her go to Paris to study. She began private lessons in art at the Louvre. She received private lessons from painter Jean-Léon Jerome. She copied works of old masters and sketched. She stayed in currents and studied with Edouard Frere and Paul Sawyer. She submitted a painting to the Paris Salon with the name Mary Stevenson and in 1868 she was accepted with the painting The Mandolin Player. It was the first time her work was represented there. She briefly returned to Philadelphia in the late summer of 1870 where her father was disapproving of her career and wouldn't pay for anything that was connected to her art. In order to help raise funds, she tried to sell some of her paintings in New York, but it didn't work out. She tried again through a dealer in Chicago but they were tragically destroyed in a fire in 1871. That same year, she returned back to Europe after being commissioned to paint two copies of Correggio's works. She was working with the advice of Carlo Raimondi. In 1872, Cassatt spent eight months in Parma, Italy, studying paintings of Correggio and Parmigianino. In 1873, Cassatt visited Spain, Belgium, and Holland to study and copy the works of Velazquez, Rubens, and Hobbes. In June 1874, she settled in Paris where she began to show regularly in the salon. Her parents and sister Lydia joined her in 1877. That same year, Edgar Degas invited her to join the group of independent artists later known as the Impressionists. She was the only American to become a member in the group. She was mainly interested in figure compositions. Her first works focused on the world of social interactions. Cassatt was drawn to painting women in everyday domestic settings. Cassatt rejected the idea of becoming a wife and a mother and embraced independence. She made a profitable and successful career painting women as subjects, not objects. During the late 1870s and early 1880s, the subjects of her works were her family, especially her sister Lydia, the theater, and the opera. She later made specialty of her best-known theme, portraits of mother and child. Aside from using oil paints, she also used pastels and made prints. Cassatt exhibited over 11 paintings with the Impressionist. Towards the end of her life, diabetes began to steal her vision, which led to her decrease of work after the 1900s. She gave up printmaking in 1901 and stopped painting in 1904. Years later, at the age of 82 and in almost complete blindness, she died on June 14, 1926 at her country home. This painting is called Breakfast in Bed and it is oil on canvas and was done in 1897. This is my favorite painting by Cassatt and according to people, the mother's position and eyesight differs to her daughter's because of her protective nature. The child's gaze is to the world beyond her and implies her curiosity to it all. To me, the mother doesn't seem to just be protective, but also maybe tired. She looks very young and like the child might have wore her out or woken her too early. 
This piece is mostly white, yet their faces and body parts stand out enough without looking out of place. It has a sense of peace. Birth Marie Pauline Morisot was born on January 14, 1841, in Borges, France. Her father was a senior government administrator, and her mother was actually related to the Rococo painter Jean Honoré Fragonard. She had two older sisters and one younger brother. She was born into the upper middle class family, so she was greatly encouraged, along with her sisters, to learn how to paint. Birth and her sister Edma received artistic education through painter Joseph Glickard, who took them to the Louvre to observe and duplicate art. She met Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot, who was a key part in Morceau's career. He influenced her to start plain air painting, which basically explains itself in plain air, or painting outside and being a part of the at atmospheric moment. She gets accepted to the Paris Salon in 1864 at only 23 years old, and since then her work was exhibited quite a few times throughout the years at the Salon. <laughs> her work consists of landscapes. She meets Edward Manet and introduces him to plain air painting. In 1874, she joins the Impressionists and exhibits her work for the very first time as an official Impressionist painter. From that point on, history was made as she continued on to exhibit her work countless times throughout the years instead of the salon. Domestic Scenes and Womanhood and more from oil painting, watercolor, and pencil. She married Edward's younger brother, Eugene Manet, a former painter a few years after. Their first and only child, Julie, was also born in 1878. Overall, Berth Morisot is one of the greatest female artists alongside these women impressionists in art history for not only their remarkable talents, but also for stepping out of artistic norms and shedding a beautiful light on impressionism. Philip Birdie says it himself, and I quote, Madame Berth Morceau handles both palette and paintbrush with truly surprising delicacy. Not since the 18th century, not since Fragonard, have such pale colors been applied with so much boldness and spirit. End of quote. Eva Gonzalez was born in 1849 in Paris. She grew up in an intellectual and bourgeois, meaning upper middle class, environment. At age 16, she was trained in drawing and the art of pastel by Charles Chaplin, a portraitist and pastelist. Chaplin cautioned her father against finding a studio for Eva on the grounds that Eva should marry. Later, Chaplin agreed she had the talent to warrant her own studio. Edward Manet was a major figure in the avant-garde art scene. In 1869, she modeled for him and met Bertha Morisot, another of his models. Gonzalez became Manet's only formal student. While studying under Manet, Gonzalez's self-portrait suggests that she was exploring her individuality and identity as an artist by presenting subtle correctives to Manet's version of her. Gonzalez never exhibited her work in any of the Impressionist exhibitions, but because of her painting style, she is identified with the group. Her painting, The Child of the Trope, was accepted into the Salon of 1870. Until 1872, she was strongly influenced by Manet, but later developed her own more personal style. By 1872, she was a regular exhibitor at the Salon. She achieved recognition for a series of large format genre paintings in which her sister, Jeannie, was the model. Much of her work became characterized through Salon reviews, 
with discussion of her feminine technique and her seductive harmony. Gonzalez's work faced criticism because of what audiences and critics claimed were overt similarities to the style of Manet, which at that time was considered somewhat crude. Particularly in 1874, a box at the Italian theater was rejected by the official jury of the Salon for its masculine vigor, which led them to reject it with questions as to her painting's authenticity. The art critic Maria Durasmus championed Gonzalez for producing paintings which challenged the way female painters were viewed and separated from the art scene in Paris. Gonzalez reworked this painting and resubmitted it. It was accepted in 1879 and described as one of the most provocative paintings of its day. Gonzalez began to experiment with other media besides oil painting. She used watercolors. She became quite skillful in the use of pastels. Her pastels may well be her most successful works. In four weeks of the 1874 Salon, Sweet Apples showed her mastery of pastel and love of color. Gonzalez married Henri Gerard, an engraver and painter in 1879. Her art evolved from scenes of domestic life to a new perspective of women, whom she portrayed from an intimate point of view that lent her works a free, independent character. Gonzalez painted emotions without the romantic sentimentalism of her colleagues. Her paintings characteristics are light and brilliant tones with whites of women's dresses predominating. Through her vision of women, Gonzalez introduced a new element into the Impressionist world, femininity. Eroticism as habitual means of exalting women in paintings was replaced in her artwork by tender, delicate view recreating everyday scenes in women's lives but de-emphasizing their domestic and maternal facets. Sadly, she died from an embolism at age 34, shortly after the birth of her son. Her areas of flat color would fuel explorations by others. Marie Brockman was born in 1840 in Argentine, France. Unlike the three other women, Brockman did not enjoy the opportunities of a prosperous and cultured family. She was largely self-taught. At age 17, Brockman's painting of her mother, sister, and old teacher posed in the studio was accepted in the Salon of 1857. In 1859, more of her work was exhibited at the Salon. Her paintings were regularly accepted for the Salon after 1864. In 1854, she received drawing lessons under the instruction of painter M. August Vassour. She later was trained by Jean August Dominique Ang, but found his attitude towards female painters intimidating and frustrating. Brockman left his studio and began receiving commissions. She married Felix Brockman, an artist and engraver, in 1869. She combined the roles of mother as she cared single-handedly for her son, as well as artist and wife, to a self-absorbed and domineering husband. They had one child named Pierre a year later. Her already delicate health deteriorated after her son's birth. Felix and Marie Brockman worked together at the Haviland Limoges studio. In 1876, she painted porcelain vessels and plaques. She designed plates for dinner services. 
she executed large fans, tin glazed earthenware, tile panels depicting the muses, sculpture, architecture, painting, poetry, music, comedy, and dance. It was her largest and most ambitious work. It was designed for the 1878 World Exposition in Paris. It marks her transition from her previous style to Impressionism. Unlike many of her Impressionist contemporaries, Brockman prepared in a traditional way through sketches and drawings. The Lady in White was her last painting in the classical technique. Felix taught her etching, but she was not successful. Monet's influence encouraged her to renounce her Angresque style of painting with its dark tones and smooth lick surfaces in favor of the Impressionist lighter tones and freer brush strokes. August Renoir and Claude Monet became her mentors. She socialized with them and other Impressionist artists. She showed her artworks with the Impressionists in 1879, 1880, and 1886, which delighted critics and fellow artists. 1880 marks a period of rapid stylistic change in her works. To her husband's disgust, Edgar Degas in 1886, Paul Gagan taught her how to prepare her canvas in order to achieve the intense tones she now desired. From 1887 to 1890, Brockman's plain air, outdoor portraits, landscapes, and still lifes progressively adopted the style of the Impressionists. Her canvases grew larger and colors intensified. She said, Impressionism has produced not only a new, but a very useful way of looking at things. It is as if all at once a window opens and the sun and air enter your house in torrents. Nature appears to you clearly, enchanted, interesting, and one escapes from the stifling of the studio. Brockman approached the interpretation of her human subjects with particular empathy for their individuality. She caught the emotional and intimate essence of her sitters, often rendering their loneliness, their apparent worlds, and their contained intimacy. Her models were usually family members, such as her son, sister, and close friends. It was within her marriage that she experienced both social, familial, and artistic limitations to becoming the artist she might have wished to become. Felix didn't appreciate her shift away from the style of Ang. In face of her husband's opposition, Marie gradually abandoned painting after 1890. In keeping with typical bourgeois tradition, she was relegated to the background and to obeying her husband's wishes. Sadly, she died as a recluse in 1916. Out of the four women Impressionist artists we covered, Brockman's work most closely reflected the traditional style of Impressionism of which we are familiar with. She used a restricted palette of eight or nine basic colors that, without being physically mixed, became fused by optical effect of short juxtaposed brushstrokes producing hundreds of different hues. She used a restricted palette of eight to nine basic colors that, without being physically mixed, became fused by optical effect of short juxtaposed brushstrokes producing hundreds of different hues. The poster advertising the fifth Impressionist 
exhibition omitted the names of the women artists. Only 16 men were listed. It was the standard view of the inappropriateness of women appearing publicly as professional artists. Women impressionists were limited to subjects such as portraits, still life, landscapes, and domestic scenes of women and children and sometimes men. The four women artists in this presentation responded to Impressionism in individual ways. Although they never formed an exclusive women's group, they did associate with each other professionally and personally. Their individual struggles for acceptance as women artists is perhaps the most moving element of their stories. Morisot termed widowhood the positive stage of life. Only Cassatt, a wealthy and independent spinster with a forceful personality, forged a successful and acclaimed career in her long lifetime. These remarkable artists overcame many barriers to influence artists for generations to come. Each woman wrestled with balancing personal lives with the demands of art. Gonzalez died at age 34. Brockman withdrew entirely in her prime because of an unsympathetic husband. 